There are two types of games I like, FromSoft games and RGG games. Well, now there's three. I fell in love with this game. I had heard some buzz about it, and it was one of those games just sitting in my Steam library that I bought on a sale and never touched. I guess I should talk about the trophies in this game. There aren't any. Yeah, sometimes I forget, Steam games just don't have trophies for some games. I mean, the bar is pretty low for what passes as a game on Steam, so I'm not really surprised. It's kind of like Hitman, except you don't have costumes, and you can play most levels gun blazing. Okay, it's, it's not like Hitman. It's nothing like Hitman. Fuck that game. This is Cruelty Squad. You're a CEO. You have a 10-year plan. I ended up loving this game so much, I wanted to unlock and see everything it had to offer. Not only does this game look and sound incredible, it has a lot of depth to it, and the gameplay is addicting and satisfying. This is my journey to completing Cruelty Squad. When I first played this game, I had never felt more like a boomer in my life. I literally couldn't figure out how to start the game. It was super overwhelming and almost anxiety inducing, but I think that's intentional. You have an implants menu, which you can't really do much with at first. You have a weapons list, which you don't have much to choose from at first, and then you have stocks. I'll be honest, I didn't get a whole lot of use out of the stock market, but when you start up the game for the first time and you see this, holy shit man. The stock market has three tabs, stock, parts, and fish. I'll get into fish later, but parts are literally body parts. You get these from killing people and either destroying their body or eating their flesh. You heard that correctly. And I don't think any of this is explained anywhere. If it was, I missed it. But that's the beauty of Cruelty Squad. At first you're like, whoa, what is that? What is this? And then you're like, uh, I'm still pretty confused, but I at least know how to play the game. But yeah, the stock market isn't useful at first. So I tried to click on this guy's text. It changed colors when I hovered over it but didn't do anything when I clicked it. There's a block to show what's selected, but it looked like it was just something missing to me. So finally, I found the start option and started the first level. And now I can find- Can't do anything here. You need to be on the hardest difficulty to get past the door that leads to the actual level. There's a lot here you can explore. There's even a tutorial, but you can't beat the level. Also, while I love this game, I'm not crazy about the controls. I changed them as much as I can, but there were still some things that I never got used to. I get the controls are supposed to mimic older games, but there's some controls that just should be standard. You use shift bar to zoom in while aiming. I changed this to right click, as it should be, but you have to manually stop zooming. In other words, you click once to zoom, and click again to come out of it. You'll probably see in some of the gameplay, me running around while zoomed in. That's because no matter how much I played, it still didn't feel right to click again to take off the zoom. To reload, you press R. Okay, that makes sense. Except, it wasn't working. It turns out you have to hold R and then flick the mouse down to reload. I like this and it's pretty cool, it makes combat way more intense. But, there were times I would flick the mouse and I felt like it was enough but it wouldn't reload. And when you're in combat you don't really want to look at your ammo. 
So you end up thinking that you've reloaded, but you have no bullets in your gun. And the game is so difficult that one second is enough to get you killed. So you have to flick pretty hard to get the reload off. So after figuring out the controls, I ran around here for probably half an hour. I even killed everyone I could just to see if anything happened. And I finally found a little hatch I could get through by moving some containers. This leads to a poison pool. There's a room in here, but you can't get to it without upgrades. So finally, after bashing my head against a wall, I gave up, quit out, and ended up finding the actual first level. Pharmacokinetics. This level is hard. Really hard. The whole game is hard, but this is one of the harder levels in the entire game, in my opinion. So the first level I got to after struggling with the menu, I could not beat it to save my life. Even after unlocking all the levels, I do think this is one of the harder levels in the game, especially starting out. There's not many routes to take, especially when you're first starting the game, so you pretty much have to go straight through the front door. There's two dogs and two guards that see you right away. They're easy enough to take out. Next you should go up the stairs. There's three enemies on the stairs, which brings me to one of the things I really hate about this game. If you're too far away from an enemy and they see you, they'll run back and forth to avoid being shot. The way they zigzag is absolutely infuriating. I'd sit there and watch their pattern and I'd try to account for where they'll end up, but as soon as I'd go to shoot them they'd suddenly jerk the other direction, like they're specifically avoiding my crosshair instead of just running around randomly. I appreciate that you can't just pick everyone off from a distance, but if you trigger an enemy, your only option is to get lucky shooting them as they run around, or just run up to them and wait for them to stop and aim. Normally this will trigger a second or third enemy, and enemies can take you out in literally a second if you let them shoot you. So most of the time, triggering an enemy to do their dumbass run triggered me to reset the level. Now is a good time to mention the goal of each level. You have to take out the target or targets and find the exit. Normally the exit is right where you start, but there's also hidden exits that make escape quicker. The targets are always visible with a crosshair on the screen, giving an idea of where they're at. So after struggling to beat this level for quite a while, I managed to take out every enemy on the first and second floor, and take out the targets. I noticed a pizza and soda on the table, so I ate them and got some health back. Then I saw a bottle of pills in the same room as the target I took out. I took the pills and the room flipped upside down. I couldn't get out of the room like this and there was nothing I could do. I looked it up because I really didn't want to reset after killing most of the enemies in the level, and I found a forum that said, yeah, there's nothing you can do. Why would you eat a random bottle of pills you found on a table? Yeah, that's a really good point. I reset and took out the target and quickly made my way to the exit. That's when I realized you're not supposed to take out every enemy or explore every inch of the level in one life. You're supposed to explore what you can, look for secrets not caring if you die, and then plan your route. Finally, take out the target, take whatever weapons you want, and get the hell out. The weapons you leave a level with are the weapons you can pick from in your weapons list so it's a good idea to grab them on your way out of a level. Beating Pharmacokinetics unlocks Paradise. Paradise is way easier. The levels are very creative. After playing the game, I immediately could tell what level someone was on from pretty much any screenshot I saw, and Paradise is definitely iconic. You're in a giant neighborhood with a drivable car and three targets towards the middle of the map. Some of the targets require you to go to the room they're in to take them out, others you can take out from a distance. This guy is surrounded by Chunko Pops. <laughs> He can easily be taken out by shooting out the glass around his room and then just shooting a rocket into the room from the street. Where do you get a rocket you ask? Just hold on a second, I'm getting there, obviously. There's a room on the second floor of this building you have no reason to go into with a bunch of guards on the first floor that has a rocket launcher in it. The rocket launcher is one of the best weapons in the game, and you can get it right away if you explore. Before I get too much further, there's some mechanics of the game to discuss. There's four difficulties in the game. You start with Divine Light, the second highest difficulty. Think of it as hard mode. Dying once takes you out of Divine Light and into Flesh Automaton or Normal. Keep dying and you change to Power and Misery or Easy Mode. Finally, there's Hope Eradicated or Extra Hard. In addition to taking more damage, Hope Eradicated adds an extra target or targets and enemies. The only way to get out of Hope Eradicated is to activate a Divine Light Shrine. There's these shrines with a white ball that activate Divine Light mode. One is in the last main mission, and the other is in the Cruelty Squad headquarters, the level with a tutorial on it. But you need a specific implant to get to it. Implants are modifiers to your character you can equip at the level select. Some can be bought and some can be found in levels. Once you find an implant, you just have to pick it up and it's yours. You don't have to beat the level like with weapons. You can also get into Divine Light mode by beating a level with the Punishment modifier turned on, but only once for each level. Punishment modifier makes enemies deal more damage 
but you get more money from beating each level. Finally, to get to Hope Eradicated mode, there's a similar shrine except it's black. One is at the end of the final main mission, and one next to the Divine Light Shrine in Cruelty Squad Headquarters. To get to these shrines, you have to get across this poison pool and into this room. From here, climb this ladder and you'll be in an empty attic. There's a special implant to see the truth in this room, or you can lower your resolution to 640 by 480 and this happens. Most of what I mentioned isn't spelled out for you at all. There's an NPC in the last main mission that mentions changing the resolution, but I don't see how you didn't realize to change the resolution in that specific room. You may think that's too convoluted, and I can definitely see how that might put some people off of this game, but I think that's really cool. There's so much hidden stuff in this game. Definitely brings back that feeling of discussing a game with your friends at school to find secrets. I love it. You can also find an implant, the Cursed Torch, and Paradise that puts you in Hope Eradicated mode by starting a level with it equipped. You die in a second on the easiest difficulty, so the hardest, you die in about half a second. So if someone catches you off guard, it doesn't really matter what difficulty you're on. The only noticeable difference for me is playing on Hope Eradicated with Punishment Mode modifier on. Here you pretty much can't get hit at all. There's some enemies that only do a minimal amount of damage, like leeches, but everything that shoots you will kill you pretty much instantly. The last thing I should mention is what it means to complete a level. Like I said, there's no trophies in this game, so it's kind of up to your own interpretation what completion means. For me, I'd say it's unlocking all the implants, all the weapons, and S-ranking every level that's possible on each mode. You're ranked on how quickly you beat the levels, and you're ranked for four different criteria. How fast you can beat the level on any level other than the hardest, how fast you can beat the level on any level other than the hardest with the default weapons, how fast you beat the level on the hardest difficulty, and how fast you can beat the level on the hardest difficulty with the default weapons. I've seen some people say you should just be able to have one ranking if you beat it on the hardest difficulty, basically saying if I can get the best time on Hope Eradicated, why do I need to set a time on an easier difficulty? Well, the times change based on the difficulty. For example, I found the casino level to be extremely difficult on the hardest difficulty, but on normal it was even harder. Normal has less targets so to compensate you have less time to get an S rank. I actually liked this because I never felt like I was wasting my time. Some levels definitely felt easier than others to S rank, but most of them were still incredibly difficult, regardless of the difficulty. Combine this music with this aesthetic and try to sprint through a level as fast as humanly possible or one tiny little mistake will ruin the run. The ultimate brush. Man, that's way too fucking slow. You don't get on that roof immediately. You don't have enough time to do this. I hate this mission. 120 is not enough fucking time for this stupid level. Yeah, I'm just gonna find the fucking corner where I can't hit you. That's perfect. Thank you so much, game. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I love the RNG of this level. So good. Makes it so much fun to try and speed run it. So like I said, you can get implants to help you with levels. Some can be bought with money, you earn from the stock market in completing levels, and some have to be found in levels themselves. This is what I used for 99% of every level when speedrunning it. For my head, I had the composite helmet. This will randomly keep you from taking damage. This can save your ass and can even stop fall damage. Don't question it. There's a life sensor that basically shows you any living thing through walls, which is helpful when going from room to room because you know where enemies are going to be positioned. When you're initially trying to beat the level, it's definitely very useful, but once you have a route picked out for your run, you already should know where the enemies are. For my chest, I switched around quite a bit, but the stealth suit is OP. You can literally walk right up to enemies and they won't see you. It's a little annoying that enemies can see you so easily without this, and I wish there was a compromise, like a permanent upgrade to give you slightly more range before you're spotted. There's an upgrade like this in the game. Once you activate Hope Eradicated difficulty, you can go to Pharmaco Kinetics and get the death mode upgrade behind a secret door. This is a permanent upgrade to your character that adds a speed boost, the ability to wall jump, and immunity to certain effects. You should try to get this as soon as possible. Plus, it just looks cool. Anyway, some other useful chest pieces are the bouncy suit, which negates fall damage, the load-bearing vest, which gives you an extra magazine for whichever weapon you start the level with, and the hazmat suit. 
There's this level that's basically a giant poison swamp. It would be really annoying to go through the whole level without getting poisoned. If you go off to the right, there's a path that leads to the hazmat suit, and this negates all poison. It's really cool when a level has a secret item that makes that level way easier to complete. And this game has a lot of that. One other chess piece is varying levels of armor. Don't use armor. This is a troll. Armor increases your defense, but slows you down. I used the armor for quite a bit and didn't think it was helping, and it turns out I was right. Armor does not work. Anything that has any damage increase or decrease doesn't work. There's a mod that fixes the armor, and apparently it's a pretty easy fix, so I kind of think this was a happy accident to troll newer players. Don't use armor. For my arm implant, I use the Grapendix. The Grapendix is the best implant in the game. It completely transforms the gameplay. You should save up to buy it as quickly as you can. You have this little tentacle thing that can go up to 30 meters in any direction and grabs onto whatever it comes into contact with. Hold jump to pull yourself towards the Grapendix, or you can hold another direction to situate yourself in a different position. It's hard to quite explain unless you've used it. You can use this to get anywhere in the game. You can also constantly bunny hop while whipping out your fat meaty Grapendix and it'll zip you through the level super fast. Or you can just swing around a level like in Spider-Man 2 for the PlayStation 2 based on the movie Spider-Man 2. This is a necessity for S-ranking most levels. Some other cool implants are the grenade, which is useful early on. It can break through some walls and doors as well as kill enemies. You have the abominator, which changes the direction of gravity. This is good for some levels where it would take too long to grapendix all the way up. Finally, there's one implant for your legs that you should be using. The Speed Enhancer Total Package. This gives you the best speed boost, but it lowers your defense by 100%. Oh no, I'm shaking in my Speed Enhancer Total Packages! Yeah, too bad they didn't implement it! So, this implant has all the benefits of the speed boost and none of the drawbacks. Fuck yeah! That makes up for me using armor that slowed me down for the first three hours of the game that didn't actually do anything. There's also an implant that gives you double and even a triple jump. This was useful for one or two levels, but mostly I stuck to the Speed Enhancer. Let's get back into Pharmacokinetics. Why are you here? Well, you get a call at the beginning of the game offering to join the Cruelty Squad after something bad happened in your previous line of work, causing you to take depression naps. The dialogue in this game is awesome. You can go to pretty much any NPC and talk to them, and they usually have some goofy shit to say. So you go to Pharmacokinetics to take out Tsugusu and his accomplices for embezzling funds. I won't be going super in depth into the story, that would need its own separate video. Unless otherwise mentioned, when talking about these levels, I'll be talking about S ranking Hope Eradicated or Extra Hard Mode with the default weapons while using the implants I mentioned in the last section. For this level, once you get the Grapendix, you can go over a gate to the right and quickly run past several enemies. Speed plus Stealth Suit is a good way to avoid most enemies. The first target is in a room with a bunch of leeches. These leeches fucking suck. Most of the time you won't see them coming, and while you're poisoned you move slower and everything waves back and forth. The next target is in a room you drop down from a vent in the next room. After that you just whip past everyone and zip to the second floor to kill the target. Jump out of the window and you're gone. This is a really hard S rank. Once you S rank a level, it's pretty easy to do it again. You just have to figure out the best way to beat a level, and once you get good enough to pull off what you need to do, you can usually do it consistently. This level is not like that. It's one of the last levels I did, and I think I'd still struggle with it now. You really have to move quickly to avoid getting killed, and there's so many enemies you pass that have an opportunity to end your run. If you're good enough, you can definitely do this consistently, and probably even quicker, but I never got that good. As for the S-Rank times, I have no idea where they're listed. I only knew them because of a video S-Ranking every level that listed the times for S-Ranking them with and without default weapons. Shout out to Big Weed, their videos really helped me with getting the S-Ranks. On to Paradise. The targets here are wasting funds on Chunko Pops. They gotta go. I love playing this level normally, but it is not fun to speedrun. It requires so much RNG, and I felt like there was just not enough time to do this consistently. You start out by driving all the way to the furthest target. There's a sniper on the roof, but he won't see you if you have the stealth suit. Take him out and zip onto his roof. If you have good RNG, you can take out two targets from this building. If that happens, it's pretty easy to S-rank this. If not, well, you'll have a couple of seconds to spare. From here, you take out the target in the building you're at to get to the Chunko Pop target as fast as you can and then take out the basement target before finding the exit. I really struggled with this one. You would expect the early levels to be easier, but they were actually some of the harder levels. Oh, oh, oh. 
Send space engineering. This is where they send people to Mars. The target here has too high of a survivability rate sending people to Mars. It's 20%. Apparently sending people to Mars is supposed to be a sacrificial endeavor. Are we the baddies? This is a really fun level. A giant pyramid in the middle of this level with a target all the way at the top. For speedrunning this level, you zip onto the roof, run around to where the sniper is, take him out and the target in his building. I've seen some people zip right up to the top of the pyramid, but every time I try, I get lit up. The enemy in the room with the target sucks. He's a fat-headed fuck. What are you? A fathead? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, meet the boneheads. <laughs> it's the fathead, you dolt! <laughs> these guys have these weird coin heads and you just have to hit the perfect sweet spot to headshot them. When they look at you, it causes your character to trip out. The screen goes crazy, but you also can't shoot right. Your crosshair goes all over the place, and sometimes you'll automatically shoot your load wasting all your ammo. I really don't know what you're supposed to do if these guys see you. It makes it impossible to kill them. And sometimes they're in places where you can't sneak up on them. Needless to say, I couldn't kill the last target up close and personal. I decided to grab the sniper, back way up, and shoot the target from the outside. This level is cool because on lower difficulties, it's possible to beat it without leaving the spot you start at. Start with a rocket launcher and shoot the target from where you spawn and you're gone. Androgen Assault, a police station where the chief is starting to act a little off after taking too much steroids. I go through my day pretty normal like. I'm a normal guy. I'm a swell guy. I'm a nice enough guy. I'm a cool kind of guy. <laughs> I'm a pretty groovy guy. But then I get a little steroids in me and I start to go cuckoo. You have to kill him and his steroids dealer. This is a steroids dealer. What the fuck? Okay, this is probably the hardest level to S rank. I hated this level. The guide I watched took a secret exit in the bathroom. You have to shoot a toilet and it shows up. There's a square you have to go through to get down this hole, and holes do not work well in this game. I constantly was getting caught on walls and doors, but nothing is as bad as holes in this game. Most of the time you have to be crouching to get through a hole and it just does not work very well. There's three holes you have to use to finish this level, and it's extremely infuriating when you're trying to get through the level as fast as you possibly can, and you can't get fucking through the fucking hole, but I did manage to keep my cool at least. So yeah, I could not use this exit to leave. I also was constantly getting attacked by random enemies that were very inconsistent. Like the route never felt safe. I also don't think this exit saves much time. I use the jet boost implant for this level since there's so many straight paths where you can boost through. Boost it here, go! Boost! Good, now again. Go! Boost! You can do better! More! I barely managed to beat this level with default weapons and it wasn't fast enough for S rank with any weapons. Using whatever weapons you want doesn't really save any time, so I'm not sure why there's such a discrepancy between these two modes. There's one dude in the first hallway with a shotgun, so you save maybe a second by not having to grab his gun, but other than that I don't see where there's a time difference between default and any weapon for S rank. This level sucks because there's almost no room for improvement. Every level has glass windows everywhere and five different paths to get to each target, Except for this one. There's one optimal path to take. There's only two spots on this level where you can even take a different route, and I don't think it saves much time either way. The final target is through a tiny door. Once you go in, it's basically a spiraling hallway that leads to a ladder in the middle. So every time you have to go through the spiral. This is where most of the time is taken, and it's why I use the jets. Once I was able to get through this level consistently, I still was like 10 seconds too slow. The only way I was able to eventually beat this is by jumping whenever I boost it, and boost everywhere I possibly could, and pulling back at the perfect spot so I don't blow past the door I need to go in. 
also getting up and down the holes consistently, which took quite a while to do. Without a doubt, the hardest level to S rank, and it just wasn't much fun. I like the look of this level, and I like the idea of raiding a police headquarters. Everything is also close quarters, so you can use a shotgun for most of it. It's pretty fun when you're playing normally, but S ranking just was not fun. Mall Madness. This level just looks awesome. I love the idea of taking out a target and shopping mall with these giant robot guards patrolling the area. You're here to take out the governor for taking a stand against corporations and monopolies. This is also where you get the AMG-4, my favorite gun for my initial playthrough. It has 150 shots and absolutely shreds. With the extra mag, you get 300 shots, which is more than enough. This gun destroys any enemy, even the armored ones. You start this level by taking out a dude minding his own business, run to the mall and zip to the top of the room to find a lip up top. Here you can take out the governor and continue through this section taking out the enemies as you go before taking out the last target. The door up top leads back to the lower mall and to the exit. The only trouble I had with this level is constantly dying to fall damage, so I ended up swapping the stealth suit out for the bouncy suit to negate fall damage. Apartment Atrocity. I'll just let this mission speak for itself. This is my favorite level in the game. You're in your apartment with a bunch of bozos ready to kick the door in. You have to fight your way down the first floor while taking out the target in the next room, and fighting through a horde of cops and mechs to get to the exit. And the song is so good. Everything about the aesthetic and sound of this level is so badass. The speedrun for this is really cool too. You can kick out your window and shoot a sniper across the street, jump over to him and take his gun, kill the target in the apartment, and then jump on the roof to take out the golem. He takes a few shots, he's a big boy, but he goes down. Now jump off the back of the apartment to get to the exit in the back. I really like web slinging around this building and taking out the golem on top. This was a level even after I S ranked, I just wanted to play over and over again. Seaside Shock, another really cool level. Why would you take another mission after they just tried to kill you? It was an accident, you idiot! They fat fingered it! Didn't mean to put a hit out on you, oopsie poopsie! Anyways, a government agency wants these targets dead and they're willing to pay so make it happen. This is another really cool level. You're on a giant boat with multiple levels. You start by taking out the target on the bottom. From here, jump up to the top and take out the two targets in the pool from a nearby roof. Last enemy is on the second floor, but you can shoot the glass from the top and kill him without even going to that floor. Finally, there's a helicopter on top that'll fly you out. Really cool level. Bog Business, a giant swamp. The target is the leader of the Eternal Swamp Cult. I already mentioned this level, once you get the hazmat suit, it's pretty easy. This is another level where RNG comes into play. The extra target for Hope Eradicated can be killed through a crack in the mountain, but sometimes he isn't in range where you can shoot him. However, I found him to be in place almost every time. Plus, even if you don't headshot him, he doesn't move when you shoot him, so you can just unload until you get him. You can web sling from pillar to pillar here, which is pretty cool. You have to get to all the way to the end of the swamp and back. Once you kill the last target and head back, I had trouble swinging on the pillar so I just bunny hopped with the grappendix as fast as I could and I was able to get the S rank. Oh, 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 oh. 
Casino Catastrophe The corporate archdemoness Elsa Holmes went gambling and lost everything, so you have to kill the casino owners. Okay, I'm starting to think my guy has no moral compass. This is definitely one that was harder to S-rank on an easier difficulty. The first room in the casino has a guy with a rocket launcher. Take the rocket launcher and go through the back. The room with the first target has a vent that leads to the second. The second target is the only target for normal, and the stairs beneath his room lead to an exit, but there's a wall you need to blow up to get to it. No problem, that's what the rocket launcher is for. Not too bad for an S-rank for Hope Eradicated. The other difficulties, on the other hand, they suck. The rocket launcher guy isn't there, so you need a bomb. There's only one target, the one that's above the exit, but you're given way less time to account for that. You don't have time to go through the vent. You have to go through the back of the casino, up the stairs, and through the next room. There's a guy you have to take out or it'll kill you. You also have to jump on the side of this room because if you touch the floor, you drop down to a room with a bunch of shit you do not want to deal with. Take out the target in the room at the end, but he's one of those fathead fucks, so you have to take him out extremely quick or just shoot around so he walks out and be ready to shoot. You also have to shoot the guys in the last room because they'll light you up before you can get to the exit. You have to throw a bomb at the explodable wall before you do all this because it wastes so much time killing everyone. If you get to this point, it's easy enough to get to the exit, but yeah, there's a reason why the game wants you to run each level four different ways. Normal is way harder than Hope Eradicated here. What's cool about this level is it has an actual slot machine that gives you a random weapon. What's not cool is that there's a special gun that has a 1 in 500 chance of dropping, the Zippy 3000. It's also a meme gun, and it has a 1 third chance of shooting, 1 third chance of jamming, and 1 third chance of backfiring and hurting you. It only took me 20 minutes to unlock this gun, but I would be doing a disservice not to mention this. I've heard it took some people hours to unlock this gun, and one person took so long to unlock it that they lost the gun in a pile of weapon once they finally did get it. Another person got the gun and then died trying to take out the target, and since you don't keep weapons unless you beat the level with them, he had to do it all over again. Also it's based on a real gun, the USFA Zip-22, which was a failure due to similar malfunctions. Idiot Party This is a cool level. There's a giant opening in the center. You start at the top and have to make your way to the bottom. You can take out enemies through the windows as you go down to make it easier, once you get to lower levels. Using the Grappendix, you can just jump straight to the bottom. Hope Eradicated adds an extra target towards the middle. He's invisible and has a special gun near him. Drop to the bottom and you can take the sewer to get out. The bottom has a spring and if you touch it, it's game over. It bounces you so much, even with the bounce suit, you won't even be able to land. Without it, you'll just die instantly. This one wasn't too bad to S rank. Office. You're here to take out... Uh, I don't know anymore, just kill the targets. This is another really cool level. There's four targets in each corner of the fourth floor of this building. You have to go to the floor below to get to most of them, in each corner, because the room they're in is sealed off from the fourth floor. There's also a target way up high that you have to take an elevator to, and the elevator takes almost a minute one way, and you have to take it back down. There's also another target above him on Hope Eradicated. I don't even know how you're supposed to get to him. You can use the Grappendix to make your way up to him, and from the outside of the building, you can take out all the targets. Swing from one target to the next, and that's cool and all, but I found a better way. See, I kept losing track of where the target up top was, so I decided to start the level by shooting the windows out so I'd know. That's when I randomly got the target eliminated pop up. Turns out, these guys are extremely suicidal. No! God, please, no! 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 Furious about this stuff. So I shot out the windows and then killed the target way up top and that was it. I love how many ways there are to beat each level. Archon Grid. The final main level. I don't understand this level. There's these glass rooms everywhere and I couldn't make my way anywhere in this level. And I couldn't make my way anywhere. I ended up beating this level by skipping everything with the grab appendix. You zip to an opening at the end of the map and that's basically it. It's a short run to the final boss. Abraxas. It's really satisfying to fight this thing. He's got these orbs you pop before taking out his head, which opens up the exit. Oh, oh, oh. 
that's when it plays the first ending of the game. Yeah, I got nothing. So that's it, right? Wrong. Look how much is left in the video. Obviously it's not the end. Come on, man. So now you can finally beat Cruelty Squad Headquarters. The door that leads to this level is a door that can only be opened when you're playing on Hope Eradicated. But wait, how do you beat the level on other difficulties? Well, you open the door, then you go to the attic with the shrines and activate Divine Light, then go back through the level. There's these orbs that will kill you, but remember Death Mode? That keeps the orbs from killing you. Cool, now you can walk straight to the final boss, but you can't kill him. He's a bullet sponge. I hit him with 300 shots from the AMG and every rocket I had, plus a few more from a nearby enemy. And he still didn't die. But don't worry, there's a special gun to kill him in one shot. It's to the right of the boss. You can get it with the Grappendix, but it's pretty hard. You should probably use the Abominator to flip gravity. But where's the Abominator at? That's also on this level. So grab that, equip it, go back and get the gun. You gotta go through a bunch of twists and turns, but you end up getting the transactional rifle and the gun probably sucks for you. This gun scales based on how much money you have invested in the stock market. So now you need at least a million in stocks. How do you do that? Well, you need to go fishing. <sighs> I'm never gonna finish this fucking video. To go fishing, you need to go to Sense Space Engineering from the starting point, go backwards to an island to get to the fishing rod. Now you can fish. Go to the casino and fish there where you can get the Wheel of Fortune fish or the Wheel of Pain. One's worth a million, the other two million. Fishing is pretty fun. Most levels have different fish. The Wheel of Fortune has a low chance of biting, and when it does, you have like a millisecond to reel it in. Because of this, the best way to fish is to constantly cast and reel back in. I missed three Wheel of Fortunes because I couldn't reel them in quick enough. So now that you have one of those fish, you can finally beat the final mention. So to S rank it on normal, you have to start the level on Hope Eradicated with default weapons, open the door to the level, go to the attic, switch to Divine Light, go through the hallway, make sure you're in death mode so you can get past this hallway, go off to the right path to get the transactional rifle, using the Abominator to flip gravity, which is also found on this level, go back and if you have enough in stocks because you went fishing and you got the Wheel of Fortune fish, you can finally kill the headquarters target in one shot, unlocking the second ending. exactly what a bad trip looks like. So I did that pretty quickly and look at all the bullshit you gotta go through to beat this level on normal. Let's see what rank I got after that. C? How is that a C? There's no rankings for Cruelty Squad Headquarters. So even if you S rank every mission, Cruelty Squad Headquarters will still only be at a C. That sucks. So that must be it, right? That's the end of the game. Dude, just look at the time left. Chill. I got more to talk about. You can unlock levels by finding secret paintings and jumping in them just like Mario. Hi, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Super Mario. We've made a lot of jokes here today. We've had a lot of fun. And I'm an, I'm an actor. But let me just be the first to tell you that, you know, it's not fun. What is not totally Biahu? Drugs and alcohol. The first of which is Dark World. The target here is an eccentric billionaire that's paying you to come kill him. I don't know, man. I'm just here for the ride. I do not like Dark World. This one was pretty hard for me. It's too dark. Who would have thought? I only had a flashlight at this point, and I didn't know there was night vision goggles. So on normal, I had to beat this level in the dark. The flashlight counts as a non-default weapon, so I couldn't use that. It's still a pretty easy level though, and the S rank is pretty lenient. Thank <laughs> you. 
Next is Alpine Hospitality. The briefing starts by saying this is a weird one. Oh, this is a weird one. Got it. Because the rest were so normal. Kind of like Office Party, you swing around the building and take the targets out from the outside. There's one target across the way that's kind of hard to take out, but it's still not too bad. It's pretty badass swinging into a building, lighting up the target, and jumping out to the next one. Miner's Miracle. You're here to take out the CEO of Godhead Heavy Industries because he's suffering from burnout so he's flaky. This was the hardest level for me to beat normally, other than the true final level. There's so many places to go but most of it is just empty space. I was able to find a route to take but this is a weird level. You end up in this weird fleshy maze and if you time it wrong it'll push you out of the level forcing you to restart. There's a secret grate right at the start of the level and from here you can drop down and go across the entire flesh maze to kill the targets. After you take them out, just retrace your steps and you can skip most of this level, allowing you to get the S rank. Neuron Activator. This is kind of like a nightclub with an extra target in a further area. This club is based on a real club in Finland which is pretty cool. I wonder if it also has giant circles where you can take out your enemies. I like this level because it has a good flow, almost like you're making a loop. Take out the furthest target and return to the club. The only part I didn't like is the second target can be killed from above, but sometimes he stays off to a corner where you can't shoot him, without jumping down. And if you jump down, there's too many enemies so you'll die right away. Other than that, you just go from room to room, taking out each target. There's a final pig thing that takes two rockets to kill, and after that, you're out of there.
House. Just House. House is listed as an implant and it costs a million dollars, but it's actually a level. This is my second favorite level. Hop in your whip, drive in a circle around this giant level, and there's three targets or triagons. I'm not going into the triagons. Don't even get me started on the triagons. The first one can be taken out by jumping through his window. On the way to the second, you have to kill the enemies in the street or else they'll kill you before you can drive off. Luckily, you can just run them over. The second one doesn't have any guards protecting him, and the third is in the next house. The third does have guards, but if you go around the back, there's a false wall you can jump through so you can kill all three without going through any guards, other than the guards you literally go through. From there, just drive back to your house and have a nice little snooze. You can also kill the worms in the middle of the stage to get some special items, including a golem suit. This is a pretty cool suit and this is another one that transforms the gameplay. People use this suit for a speedrunning style called Bubble Percent. This community is pretty awesome. Also when I was trying to get the golem suit, the wiki said, item granted to the player after defeating the lowest triagon found across the middle of the lake. I don't know, that doesn't sound to me a lot like, hey shoot the giant worms in the middle of the lake to me. So I went to a house across from the lake and found Brad. Brad is awesome. He's a carpenter, he's a good member of society, he pays his bills on time, he has a 10 year plan, he's a real cool guy. I went to a new tab to look up a few who I needed to kill, and the fucking wiki started playing some Spanish ad, and I thought it was coming from the game, so I freaked out and I fucked up and I shot Brad, I killed him. I killed Brad. He doesn't come back. I didn't mean to, I swear I didn't mean to, the gun, it just went off my trauma loop. The true final level. Only unlocked after beating every other level. It's really hard. But what if we said fuck that shit and just skip the entire level, like the, the whole level? This level is really easy to S rank because you can just jump over everything. There's a death plane that you have to go through to get to the bottom of the level. It'll kill you instantly if you touch it. But if you use the cortical scale down to make yourself much smaller, you can actually slip through it. So you can basically just jump to the end of the level and before you die, you can get to this giant orb which allows you to beat the level. But you can't do this the first time you play the level. Any implants you equip are automatically unequipped as soon as you start the level. Trauma Loop is a cool level. The design looks cool. The sound is really creepy. This whole level is actually really creepy. And I'm glad I was able to beat it. But I feel like every path you can take in this level just sucks. The best path I could find was going to the left, taking this elevator down, platforming down a hole, kill this giant leech, and then running to this area into this door. There's a bunch of enemies here and it's easier to take them out but the next part has a really difficult section, so I didn't want to waste my time trying to take everyone out. This guy across the bridge sees you pretty much immediately, at most you have a split second to headshot him, and if you don't he starts doing the run back and forth shit. You won't be able to take him out without wasting most of your ammo, and he can decide to stop running and shoot you pretty much whenever he wants, so you can't just take out the other enemies. I find it's best to try and take him out and if you don't get it, fuck it, just try and run past him. You might die but you'll waste less time than sitting there for a minute trying to shoot him. The next section has a bunch of zombies, but if you crouch they can't hit you. Walk through until you reach a hole to drop down at. This part felt broken to me. I've watched other people do this, I've looked up guides on how to do it, but for me it's 50-50 on if I'll survive the drop. You're supposed to fall down and slide against this wall, 
Once you reach the lip, you're supposed to wall jump and then land on the pyramid. I know what to do here, but I still die or take damage half the time. This is why I just run past the other section. This is too inconsistent for me to get through. Like I said, there's other paths to take, but I found all of them to be harder than this one. The right path involves platforming. Boy, I sure do love platforming in a first person shooter where I can't tell where my feet are. No thank you. Even if you do get past the platforming, there's a goober off screen you literally can't even see him, but he has a transactional rifle that will one shot you if you have enough money in stocks. You could sell all your stock, but I don't really want to do that. I have a 10 year plan. I did end up killing him, and he's actually a special enemy that doesn't respawn, but I didn't know that at the time. Best bet is to keep falling down until you get lucky and survive. From here, there's another drop with two dudes around the edges. They're easy enough to kill, and from here you can take a ladder down. There's a leech down here, but just ignore him and run out of the room. From here, it's pretty much smooth sailing. Just bunny hop your way to victory. Oh, those are some nice pictures. Proud of you. Ten out of ten. So yeah, I really love this game. I wasn't planning on making a video on it or even completing it, but I had to see everything this game had to offer. The best part is there's still so much to do in this game. Yeah, I accomplished everything I can and unlocked everything, but like I said, people beat this game bubble percent. People beat it baton only, so there's still a lot to do. I'm really looking forward to what this publisher does in the future, and if you haven't played it, you definitely should. There's more effort put into this game than most I've played in the past few years, and it's worth the price. So next video will probably be Yakuza 4. I wanted to start doing a random game in between Yakuza games to vary things up and also keep me from getting burnt out with Yakuza. I have a couple of ideas for future games, but if you have any suggestions of any cool games to complete, let me know in the comments. Okay, bye.